Oh man, it's so dark out here. Well, it's a good thing I brought my torch. Hello everyone, and welcome to a retired review. Today I'm taking a look at set number 8500, Torch. The set was released in 1999, contains approximately 33 pieces, and during time of release was about $6. Alright, we're going way back. This is easily the oldest LEGO set I've ever reviewed, and I'm sure I'm going to be reviewing some older ones eventually, but for now, this is where we're starting off. Now, as a disclaimer, I am going to give my personal opinion on this set, and everything in this video is coming from the perspective of someone who grew up with Bionicle. Now, Slizers, or Throwbots in the US, is generally considered to be the grandfather of construction, or at least the first construction theme as we know construction today. So this is going to be very interesting, but of course I will be comparing it to the most popular construction theme LEGO released. So right out the gate, let's look at the color scheme and functions. The color scheme is very consistent, it is red and black, and I quite like it. It's very striking and very fire-esque. It's definitely what I think of when I look for a fiery color scheme. Now that might be conditioning due to Bionicle, but of course, you know, I have a wood stove. Charcoal is very dark and black, and then of course if it's slightly smoldering, it has that reddish appearance. So I like it. It looks very charred, and the fiery bits on the hand definitely help that. As far as functions are concerned, we have two primary functions, the first being this gear function that is comprising the torso. Now, I'm kind of mixed on this, I don't know how I really feel about the set being built around this function, because I feel like it's really only there to put it in the box. I don't really feel that this function helps with posing or anything else, really. It doesn't sell the set for me. And it's also a huge gear that makes him look very hunched back, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, though I do find it peculiar. The other function is with the throwbot hand. You can take the arm, click it up into this other shoulder piece, pull it back with the disc inside, and let go. And it works very well. My issue with it is that it's very stiff. It's a very long arm that doesn't really have any stable articulation, so you can't hold it in unique poses. It just sticks out like that, and I'm not a fan of how that looks. As far as the discs are concerned, it comes with two. One with Torch himself, which of course is of a fire symbol, and the other one actually is of Ski, another throwbot entirely. I don't know what the intention is here, maybe it's collectability, maybe it's cross-promotion, I don't know. Before I move on to the canister, looking at the face, he does have a unique print, though it's awfully complex and it's not something that I find iconic. I don't think I'm going to remember the details and specifics of this print because it feels very samey with a few of the other slicers. Finally, the canister. So all the slicers come with a canister. It looks a little bit like a spaceship. It's got the robot, the throwbot arm, the disc, the Technic branding, and <laughs> it has belt loops. That's right, there is a comic out there that advertises putting this on your belt. I think, no, it actually might be in the instructions too. So, that's different. Now, every slicer has a specific folding pattern so you can put it in this container. I'll go ahead and show you on screen what that looks like for him. It's pretty simple, though it's not simple enough to where I'm going to remember how to do this. Not without the instructions, which is where you can find out how, or obviously on screen here. I feel like it's a nice gesture, however, I'm not sure I really like going through all the trouble just to put it in there, especially if I'm going to have to do it again when I take it back out, mess around with it, and then want to put it back in, but there you go. At the end of the day, this is a fascinating set. I find it to be unique, it's got a certain charm to it, I feel a lot of the slicers do, though I feel like it doesn't have the refinement that I've come to expect from particular Bionicle sets, especially ones that I'm accustomed to, like the humanoid figures, the bipedal Toa, or the, even the Turaga to an extent, the ones that I expect to look a very particular way, maybe more humanoid than this. I'm not saying this is bad, by no means. I'm just saying that I find it peculiar, 
maybe not as well refined. The gear function, I, I have a hard time getting to the back of it because it's not very well organized, I suppose. I also feel like there's the risk of him being top heavy. Some of the other slicers are top heavy because of the feet. They're too small. So that's kind of a risk you run with this figure and some of the others. Overall, I like it at the same time. I'm not sure if it's the strongest of the slicers, at least not to me. It's not the greatest introduction, I feel. And as such, if I had to make a recommendation, I'd say you can probably pass on this guy. I mean, if you're interested in a fire robot, then by all means, go for it. I'm not saying don't get it. Though, I probably wouldn't have sought this out were it not for this review. And in fact, I didn't even buy this for this review. This is on loan to me from my good friend Meso. So thanks, Meso, for sending these over. But what do you think about the Slicer? Let me know in the comments below. I love reading comments, and I'm happy to hear other perspectives that might disagree with this one. Thank you all so very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. And join me next time when I look over the next Slicer, Ski. Once again, thank you all so very much, and I'll see you all next time. Farewell.